very good morning to everybody uh, honorable chairman co chairman and dignitaries participants and friends so i will be speaking about approaches for enhancing yield potential in food crops with a focus on rise to ensure national food security so i will be covering the area like what is this background about i will be speaking then yield potential through hybrid approach yield potential through super rice breeding yield potential through new generation rice yield potential through pyramiding of yield qtls genome engineering conversion to c4 pathway and then finally i will be concluding so the, the you know the main concern is that population is increasing at, a, at an alarming rate if you will be seeing our during our independence during 1950s the population was 36 crore and now if you will be seeing by 2020 today it is nearing to 137 crores so by that time we were by 1950 we were like a begging and borrowing type of situation where in by that time we were getting we were able to produce only 50 million tons of food grain to to rice if you will be thinking it was around 20.5 uh, million ton of rice so now if you will be seeing now it has uh, jumped many times by 2020 the uh, rice production has reached to 117.94 million ton this is up to the third estimate and the food grain production is around 290 uh, 95.67 so there is a corresponding jump in population as well as there is a very significant jump in the food production so what is then concern is concern is if we will be seeing by 2030 then our population will be around 154 crores and by, by that time we need around 330 million tons of food grain and to rise if we will be think it will be around 130 approximately million tons and again if we will be seeing 2050 our population will be around consumers will be 180 80 crores and the approx food grain will be more than 360 million ton and rice will be 160 to 170 million tons then why we are worried we are increasing our population as well as we are increasing our food grain production then where is the concern why we are worried the thing is if we will be analyzing the data by 2030 our target is achievable now it is 109 117 million ton and target by 2030 is 150 2030 is 130 million ton so that means we are almost reached to that point another 13 million tons of rice or yeah, food grain we we need by that time by that way we can reach but if we will be th- seeing beyond 2030 we have to think in a different way by that time our population will be very high and by 2030 yes say around 2040 we have to produce more and the land is declining and climate change all and all other uh, difficulties we have to produce more and more so in that way i want to also cite you the agricultural hold, holding you see the per day per productivity is declining or remaining constant and similarly also uh, if you will be seeing this this uh, uh, trend of production and requirement of cereals there is a gap now so we are comfortable now but what the concern is that also rice also we are comfortable it is well ahead but the area is slightly declining production productivity is increasing but thing is that there is enough food beyond 2030 how where what we will be doing the lands are declining then the climate is becoming very worse we are increasing our population how to cope up with that situation say imagine 2040 so that we have to adopt some as our honorable dg was telling they are we have to uh, we have to think for some technology which will be able to uh, break through the technology which will give us the problem of uh, this food security we we cannot attend that so i will be as i told you i will be covering about this increasing yield potential through i told you heterosis breeding or hybrid you know new plant type everybody is known it is super rice breeding then pyramiding of 
yield QTLs, new generation rise, conversion of C3 to C4, and then finally we will be touching genome editing. So you know everybody what is a hybrid? Hybrid is first filial generation of a cross which is having commercial value. Not any F1 dissimilar F1 we can say hybrid. It should have 15 to 20 percent above uh, the best inbred line. And if it is a super hybrid, then it should have 25 to 30 percent in over the best inbred. So you know this. This uh, we have to convert the system in case of rice. It will be thinking we have to convert the system to a self. It is a predominantly self pollinated crop. We have to convert the system to a cross pollinated one. Then only it can be a hybrid. Hybrid means one parent will be female, another parent will be male. So you have to induce male sterility in one parent. You will be surprised or you will be astonished to know that this concept of sterility was first given by here from uh, Kotak, that is Sampath and Mohanty in 1954, wherein they told that cytoplasm may be responsible for sterility factor. But later on, Chinese, they could exploit and, uh, and they developed uh, wild, from wild sources, they developed hybrids, parental lines, and uh, you know the person, Professor Luang Ping, is the father of uh, hybrid rice. So you know these are the five ways how we can develop hybrid, cytoplasmic genetic male sterility, genetic male sterility, then environment sensitive genetic male sterility, chemically induced male sterility, engineer male sterility. Very briefly, I will be touching. If anybody will be able to know, they can contact me. Detail we can go through how hybrid we can enhance these things. You know, A line is a restorer gene, and uh, cytoplasm should be also sterile, but B line should be a fertile uh, cytoplasmic factor. So, restorer, this A, when A and B is crossed, this is maintained as a restorer, it's maintainer line, whereas this RF gene is present in the restorer line. A and R is crossed to get the hybrid seed. So if we will be seeing the second one, genetic male sterility, here there is no involvement of cytoplasmic factor. Here this is a very potential one, and this male sterility is governed by this sterile gene, that is the MSMS gene. And if you will be exploiting this one, there is no problem of uh, this uh, cytoplasmic factor. So this process is... Uh, we have to, but the problem is that one is to one problem of this sterile fertile will exist. So we have to tag somewhere to this male fertile plants. And this best example is SPT rice by DuPont, wherein they, they have used a color shutter to sort out the fertile plant and heterosis here can be harnessed very highly. So if we will be going to the other approaches like two line, you know, TGMS, PGMS, these are uh, particular uh, area, particular time or uh, photo period, yeah, temperature, this line will be sterile and can be useful for hybrid and no, no much use in India. Similarly, chemical hybridizing agent, this approach is also not followed in India. As you know, the, the uh, flowering period is longer duration and there is no synchronous uh, flowering, and so we cannot apply this chemical hybridizing agents. Then the most important one is the engineered male sterility system. I want to say you, this has a potential. You know, the, the, the system is why we are going towards engineered male sterility system. Here, if we are transferring the male sterility, then we have to transfer whole cytoplasm. Then we have to see whether it is a maintainer or nuclear restorer or you have to go for test crossing, then only you have to get a hybrid. But if the cytoplasmic factor can be transferred to the nuclear background, then we can get the benefit and, and this undesirable effect, genetic load cannot be carried forward. So those first report of this, uh, this uh, uh, candidate gene for the cytoplasmic factor was ORF79 which was a Boro system, Boro 2 system. The next report was the 1.1 the unedited KB ORFB gene from IIT Professor, Professor Das. Then you know the system of why it is happening. I want to tell in brief, very briefly, this when there is RF RF gene and it's, it's provide a defective ATP synthesis and the pollen becomes the sterile. When the, when the restorer genes are present, that time it, 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 it produces normal ATP synthase and the pollen are fertile. 
so in that way it can be engineered and then finally the report of nature groups that was the wa352 wherein they are telling that this is the candidate gene so if we are getting the candidate gene there is no problem of then putting in the nuclear background from cytoplasm then we can get the engineered plant and this heterosis as 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 and when we are getting a heterotic combination to any parent we can convert it as a male steroid one so these are the you know the fertility factor rf3 rf4 are involved and uh, and how this is happening this process the next approach how we can increase the yield potential is our super rice approach so you know the super rice concept in 90s it was uh, started and you know the super rice is with a heavy panicky yield and our modern rice with a high tillering type and traditional type are with tall and very very high biomass so in order to get that super rice the, the, we have some of the objectives breeding objectives like it, it should be side tillering and 200 to 250 uh, grains for panicky and the plant should be uh, sturdy plant and the leaf should be root uh, should be vigorous and the plant height should be like that we have some of the set of the things and the first generation new plant types was a failure you know why it was due to sterility problem so you know super hybrid then then came up then while the scientist scientist they targeted orienting the leaf angle they just, they just uh, top three leaves they uh, consider important and they modified the leaf type and they 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 somehow become the successful in developing super hybrids and these are the you know recently also there is green super rice wherein rice we can produce with uh, high yield with less inputs like water fertilizer pesticide by without giving any of these things uh, with high yield that is to that is to produce climate smart varieties and the, many of these green super rice are coming now so also we started here at nrri kotak we started doing new generation rice this this concept when dr mohapatra was here we started working about this super rice how how we can enhance uh, the yield potential in india as a, as a, we just modified little bit concept of super rice and we targeted the the super rice that is we termed it as new generation rice here the side tillering concept was improved to a moderate tillering and the other thing like harvest index of 0.5 and high biomass coupled with we targeted around more than 10 tons and the biomass was 20 tons and and uh, the harvest index coupled with was 0.5 so that at least we will be able to produce more than 10 tons of rice so i will be showing some of the share uh, slides you can see how the panicky semi panicky more spike led with semi dwarf plant height and with very high uh, you can see some of the plant types and to panicky is around 14 15 grams if you will be able to fix four five plants also it is giving a, around 75 gram grams per per hill so so this these are the examples this, this is the variety we have developed in odisha it is known as 307 or maudamoni and this is also with the background of that and it is having a heavy panicky strong calm and you can see the features of the variety and this is another variety released uh, through this uh, ngr and strong calm heavy panicky and high grain number grain test weight we have uh, put together all the traits together here so next uh, this is about super rice a new plant type yeah, other the next approach is our pyramiding you know pyramiding of yield qtls for higher yield potential there are so many now genes are mapped and cloned yield qtl particulars particularly so if those can be pyramided together in a superior background then our purpose of yield potential can be enhanced so i am showing you the location of the yield qtls where they are located in the chromosome and these are the functional uh, yield qtls which can be exploited for a high yield in rice so you know as there is one uh, qtl that is gn1a if gn1a is present then it is enhancing the grain number similarly if you have the spl14 then it is increasing the branching of the panicky if we can put this uh, uh, qtl then branching number will increase so branch number significantly is improving 
then if you will be putting the SEM two gene, that is strong call modulus. That means if the modulus of the stem is strong, is very high, then we can also produce uh, uh, strong column type, uh, which will be bearing a heavy panicle and will not collapse. And that is that is also giving pleiotropic effect of high grain number. So if if we can har harmoniously we can pyramid we have to pyramid uh, in a background together then the way we have to think we have to go for if we want more uh, more grain length in a longitudinal way then we should think for GS3 if uh, grain size is bigger and grain width is bigger then we should put GW2 and G GIF1 if the uh, longitudinally this uh, grain is higher than then we, we have to deploy GW5 and GW2. So accordingly as per our target we should put the QTLs together so that yield potential can be enhanced. So this is one model wherein how the, the things has been done through high throughput selection system. And this is an example wherein I, if as in, you know it is improved cultivar ideal plant ar architecture. If this gene will be put in putting in uh, a variety, then we can increase the grain number, then increase uh, panicle size, then increase column strength, then uniform grain peeling, and uniform heading and high grain, grain peeling. So you, you see this SPL-14, effect of SPL-14, if you are putting this gene, how tremendously the panicle size is increased grain, grain number. And uh, this is in case of our nil lines where we have uh, introduced in MTU tent and background. You see before putting in SPL 14 GN1A, these are the G after uh, giving this nil line, this was the original MTU and backrest one, backrest two, you can see the dramatic way of uh, putting the gene, uh, if you are putting then how the nil lines are behaving. So this is example in case of MTU, Sambhavasuri and Solna. How by putting these three QTLs, how we are dramatically improving the yield potential. So as I told you, if we are giving this SPL 14, how branching number is changed so rapidly. And then I want to say about how the next approach is our conversion of C3 to C4. You you know this, uh, this uh, C3 cycle and C4 cycle. C3 cycle in, the, in, the, in this process, what happens? The enzyme Rubisco CO2, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it uh, converts to uh, sugar, but before that, it, in case of stress, it also utilizes this Rubisco with, with oxygen. But in case of C4, it, there is a, it, it happens in mesophyll cell, but in case of C4, you know it is in the bundle cell. So there is no chance of Rubisco combining with oxygen. So only directly here, this Rubisco will be combined with carbon dioxide. So there is no loss in case of uh, this, uh, this, uh, this c 4 ness and this C3, uh, lots of energy we are using, we, we are losing, which is through photophosphorylation. Photophos so it is combining with oxygen and we are losing energy. So it can be, this structure can be converted to to like C4, like maize, jowar, there we can enhance the yield potential. This possibility is around 60% more, we can enhance the yield as well as water use efficiency and uh, so on. So weed competitiveness also. So this is uh, research is going on and we hope uh, we may get this uh, C4 anatomy, particularly for rice plant. So uh, as you know, this very important one is genome editing. You know, genome editing, CRISPR case, everybody were uh, listening, then CRISPR, CPF1, and base editing. Here, what is the target? As like earlier mutation, we were hit and trial, we were creating variation. But here, targeted place, targeted site, we can cut, and we can create uh, double cut uh, this uh, to DNA, double standard DNA. So here, after cutting with this CRISPR, uh, this case enzyme at a particular site, we can, you know, the system as a repairing system and it, it takes repairs by taking uh, additional sequence wherein we can put that, uh, that, that through we can, we can create variation and this is a tremendous scope to alter the genotype of the plants. 
similarly in this case when there is a need of blonde and you can use this system and also base editing so there are huge number of application now in rice it has come up editing the gene uh, you know, as i told you spl gene is edited already this already in qtls are being targeted why above that by editing better better more more of yield potential can be achieved so many examples are there in case of genome editing as you know the herbicide resistance the gn1 ossbl protein these are already edited during the year 2018 19 like that so many now this work is very very highly it's, it's focused so that this editing will be very highly useful so with this i want to conclude that uh, that development of highly genetic uh, heterotic hybrids is required for for feeding the future uh, burgeoning population super hybrids new generation rice anything super hybrids can be developed integrating molecular markers technology with the genomics with conversion of uh, conventional plant breeding is the is emphasized to develop high yielding rice variety genome engineering you know has a bright prospect in enhancing the yield potential in rice and finally continued efforts are needed to develop high throughput and cost effective genomic tools for use in breeding and uh, increase yield potential thank you thank you very much